Hello, everybody. My name is John LeDrew with Melco International. On this episode of Digital Mondays, we're going to talk about pre-treating. Um, I'm going to show you how to pre-treat properly. I'm going to show you um, how to clean your machine. I'm going to show you what good pre-treat looks like as opposed to bad pre-treat. And then I'm going to give you some suggestions on some uh, pre-treat solution that we like and uh, just some ways to apply it. Um, and we're going to really take this process that people find relatively complicated and we're going to make it really simple because it is. And as long as you do the right steps, um, you're in good shape. So um, we'll start with the Mr. T1 pre-treat machine. This is um, a machine we've been selling for a little while. There's been a few renovation, uh, um, renovations, yeah, maybe, that's right. Oh, by the way, Nate's behind the camera. Um, so if you have any questions, he's gonna help kind of throw out some uh, questions to me and I'll help answer them. Uh, but we're always glad to have him back there because he does such a good job. Uh, so the Mr. T1, um, it, it, what I like about it is it's inexpensive, uh, it's relatively simple, I mean it, it's not a complicated machine to operate um, and it's, it, it's easy to clean so um, it, does, it does the job. It sprays shirt well, uh, it's easy to clean it up and that's really what you want out of a good pre-treat machine is something that's consistent. So if you're finding that your pre-treat application, if your nozzles are spitting a uh, pre-treat solution not properly or it's dripping, that's just a matter of it uh, not being cleaned properly. So we'll talk a little bit about that. That's an important part, just to make sure your pre-treat machine's uh, clean. Um, so I wanted to show you a few shirts that I did. This one, um, it doesn't look too bad, I guess, on camera, uh, but I want to maybe compare that to, to this one, which I think should look considerably better. Um, and the difference here is this shirt was pre-treated properly and this shirt was pre-treated improperly. So if you're finding that you're having vibrancy issues or you're seeing that, you know, my colors just aren't as bright as they should be, um, that's usually the issue. It's not usually garment creator. It's not, um, it's not your settings. It's not likely your artwork. It's probably your pre-treat application. So I get this call um, a lot and then once we're able to, uh, I'm able to walk people through the technique to keep your uh, pre-treat machine spraying well and giving you good, good results, um, usually this problem of, of vibrancy goes away. So um, three things that we really want to be conscious of when we're printing on uh, the F2100 to make sure that we get good vibrant prints. One, we have to pre-treat properly um, and we're going to show you that now. And then two, and we've talked about this before, is good quality blanks. So um, Cotton Heritage, Spectra, uh, some ring spun stuff that you can buy from the big guys like Anvil, or not Anvil, um, Alpha Broder or Sanmar. Uh, you can get uh, some nice 100% ring spun cotton shirts that work really well. Blends are working really well now with the right pre-treat application. Even we can do polyesters with the right pre-treat application. So uh, it's, it's really opened up a lot of options. But again, if you want that best quality result, use a really good quality blank. And if you go to some trade shows, you'll see, notice what um, um, other printer manufacturers and uh, other people that are creating samples at the show, notice what shirts they're using. Those are the shirts you should be using and there's a reason they're using them is because they're so good. So um, I want to show you the basics of uh, making sure that you have a good application, what an application might look like. I'm using this gray shirt because uh, we're going to put some pre-treat down on it and I want to show you what good coverage looks like. So in pre-treating, coverage is key. Uh, you want to make sure that you're not oversaturating the shirt, but not undersaturating the shirt. Um, and basically, we want to make sure that we have the whole area covered where we're going to print. And not just covered, but we're sure we have it covered. So I'm going to show you a few ways to do that. So I'm going to load my shirt on this machine, collar forward. Um, just kind of square it up like you would normally. Um, I like to think of all my, uh, uh, when I'm squaring up shirts on all the platens, whether it's on the pre-treat machine, on the heat press, think about it squaring it up like you would be on your, uh, on your printer, on your platen, on, your, on the 2100. That way nothing's crooked or cattywampus and you're, you're sure that you're spraying the right area. So on the Mr. T1, this is ready to go. Um, I can choose how much I want to spray. Um, I can be less towards the front or more towards the back. It's not that hard to figure out necessarily. Um, typically, I just run the whole shirt, but if I'm doing a lot of maybe smaller stuff, I can just do the front, the front half, which works really well. But we'll just fill it back up again. Uh, there's a number of different speed settings. Um, I like the round trip setting on speed four for printing on pre -treat, or printing on a cotton shirt. It works really, really well. Um, it gives me just about enough pre-treat solution. I don't really have to worry about it anymore after that. Um, and then I just hit my start button. It's going to spray it. It's going to come back and hit it again. And I want to show you what this looks like. But before I do, this is a little tip that 
um, uh, Epson taught me years ago, a guy named Larry Kaufman. He was the man. He, well, he's, he's still the man, but he was like, he was the dude who really started you know, doing a lot of stuff with the 2100 and getting pre-treat application going right away. And this little tip that he came up with has been really helpful for a lot of us operators out there. I want to show you how, what, what this does is when you're brushing your garment after you've pressed it or after you've got it wet, um, if you brush it back and forth left to right, kind of the direction of print head travel, you're going to help flatten down those fibers a little bit and spread out the pre-treat a little bit more. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't affect anything on your pre-treat uh, application. It doesn't look any different if it was dried. It just helps kind of keep the fibers in place, I guess, and it makes it look good. So this is what I want to show you on a gray shirt, that that square is what we're looking for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that square is what we're looking for right there. Perfect coverage. You can't really argue and say that that's not a good pre-treat application, right? So we want to get you to the point where you're seeing this every time, right? It's not complicated, um, and we're going to show you how to make your machines clean so you can get this, but this is how this is done. From here, you can hang it, you can put it in a conveyor dryer, uh, you can put it on your heat press. A lot of people dry pre-treated shirts on heat presses. I'm not the biggest fan of this application, however, I think it does, it does work well on a pinch, that's for sure. I don't have any paper, unfortunately. Hmm. I overlooked something. I thought I had it all squared away this morning. No, no, it's okay. It's too late. We're just going to do what I would say don't do. Uh, no, we're good. Uh, what we typically don't want to do is put your heating element right down on a wet garment. You might be able to hear that sizzle. Uh, but the point here is... Uh, I want you to see how the water is going to evaporate. You're not going to see it, but that's the question people ask me all the time. Like, John, how long do I dry a pre-treated shirt for? And there's no right answer. Um, the answer is, there's no right answer on time. The right answer is, however, when it's dry, when it's 100% dry. When, you don't, when you're not even like, oh, I don't know if that's dry or not. You can't, be, you can't question whether it's dry or not. It either is dry or it's not. Um, and so the way I will check this is, after a few minutes, after I see the steam is all evaporated, I'll open up the shirt and I'll stick my hand inside to make sure if it's dry. If it's dry on the inside, then you definitely know it's dry on the outside. And an, um, another benefit of sticking your hand inside the garment is you don't necessarily ruffle up those fibers. So, uh, and it keeps your shirt, print, uh, your shirt nice and smooth and, and easy to print on. So, uh, pretty simple on the Mr. T1. I don't know if anyone has questions on that, but um, it, the operation itself is really simple but what makes it so important uh, is that you clean it well if you don't clean it well you're not going to receive that perfect spray every time so I'm just going to show you quickly how to do that it's not terribly complicated um, it's actually very simple one thing you'll notice so it's kind of hard to notice in, uh, it, with our camera angles here but our machine is tilted back so it's at an angle so it's draining into the tube uh, into the uh, waste waste container in the back it's gravity fed don't need to do anything special. Just make sure it's a little bit higher in the front than in the back. Um, that's going to give you good, good coverage or good draining. Um, from here, say I've pre-treated all day and I'm done. Um, I've pre-treated a couple hundred shirts or whatever it is, five shirts, doesn't matter. This is not quite done, so we'll let it. I'm not putting any pressure because I don't want to sizzle my heating element, so it could take a little longer than normal. Typically, it's about, I don't know, 50, 70 seconds, depending, but again, it doesn't really. So for cleaning solution, I use Simple Green and uh, hot water. Uh, hot water and Simple Green does a really good job at breaking down pre-treat. You don't need a lot of concentrate, maybe just a couple teaspoons of pre-treat or of Simple Green per uh, bottle of hot water. That's going to do a really good job at uh, cleaning your machine out. So from here, um, I will now, so say I'm done pre-treating for the day um, and I've switched my bottle from water to or switch my caps from water to or from pre-treat solution to um, cleaning solution. The trick here is to hit the clean button, let it kind of run some cleaning solution through. You're just spraying right into your right into your uh, tray. Doesn't matter because it's draining right down the back. And the good thing is you're spraying that cleaning solution in there, and you're starting to maybe break up a little bit of that overspray or pre-treat. From here, I'm just going to slow my speed way down to like two or something, and I'm just going to run it back and forth a couple times, okay? So I'm spraying the whole inside of the unit, 
Not, nothing special here. The whole idea here is use that spray nozzle to spray the hole inside and out, inside of your machine to help break up that pre-treat solution that might be building up. Okay, from there I'll open it up. We'll go to the top camera here. Okay. Um, and I'll take a terry cloth towel and I'll just start wiping down the whole heating out, or the whole inside of, this, of the, of the, uh, the pre-treat machine. Um, you can see that it's kind of it's draining really well. My whole inside is covered in wet, which is good. Now a terry cloth towel will be perfect in here to just wipe everything down, get that old pre-treat spray built up. You can leave the camera just like that, Nate. And then we'll hit it. Uh, then we'll push the drawer in, and then we'll switch to the other camera here, and then we'll start it again. I'll spray the whole thing. This time I'm spraying the whole top of the platen. So this is now cleaning solution all over the top of the platen. It's all wet. It's, it's breaking up all that uh, pre-treat buildup. And I just, again, wipe it down with a terry cloth towel and then this thing's good to go. From here, I can essentially assume if my spray on the top of the platen with my cleaning solution looked good and it covered it edge to edge, that then my nozzle is good shape and I don't have to likely clean my nozzle. However, if my nozzle doesn't look good, if by the end I'm spraying and it, it seems like this, the spray pattern isn't very consistent, then I will need to clean my nozzle. Um, your nozzle is here on the, on the T1. It's really a very simple, simple process to clean. Simply going to remove the nozzle. I can decide to soak this overnight. If you're going to, um, if you're just going to let it sit and you want to just break up some cleaning solution, you can let this soak overnight. If you want, um, my, my preferred method is to go right to the toothbrush and just kind of brush it all out. A little cleaning solution uh, with simple green and water. Give it a little brush. It certainly does not hurt to let it soak. You can maybe use a little needle to make sure your nozzle hole is clean. This, this has to be clean. A lot of people find that um, their pre-treat spray is not good, and that's because their nozzle is uh, clogged. So to keep your nozzle clean, I use that cleaning solution at the, at the, end, of every sh at the end of every shift. So you have a little jig here to make sure that that's in the right spot, which it is. And so I know I'm good. Maybe give it a little crank just to be a little bit tighter. Not much. You don't need a lot of pressure on that. And so now I know if I'm, if I'm unsure and I know I have a job tomorrow, I can, do, I can run a, a, a pass one more time and just kind of look in there and see how the nozzle's spraying. It looks perfect. It's covered the whole thing edge to edge. I'm not, I don't see any reason why that cleaning solution uh, wouldn't, or if I put pre-treat in right now, why it would not give me a perfect spray. So the takeaway here is make sure your machine's clean. Make sure your nozzle's clean. If you can do that, you're going to get consistent spray every single time. I like the cleaning solution method. It works really well. Um, I, just, I, just, I just know that when I set up my pre-treat machine, before um, I break it down, I want it, to print, I want it to make sure that the spray nozzle is looking good. Because what I don't want to do is start the next day, come in, fire it up, and then find out that my nozzle had been sitting in uh, uh, pre-treat solution and is all clogged um, and is giving me a poor poor result. So it's a really good process, uh, works really well. So on this, on this shirt, we can see that it looks pretty dry. Um, it feels dry. If it feels wet on the inside or if you're touching it in here and it feels damp at all, um, that shirt isn't dry. So again, you can hang dry them, you can run them through a conveyor dryer, you can use the heat press. Um, those are the three best ways to cure it. Um, I prefer, frankly, when after I pre-treat, um, if I don't have to do the job right away, I'll pre-treat, then fold the shirt over on itself and just kind of fold it over again. And I'll just stack it and set it aside and I'll come back to it um, in a couple hours or the next day or whatever, uh, throw it on the heat press real quick for a few seconds. And that, that usually does a great job giving me good results. So you don't necessarily have to cure it. You don't have to dry it right away. Um, there's no rush. I mean, you have, I think Epson says almost like three months shelf life or something. So quite a while on that. So let's talk about mixing pre-treat, type of pre-treat solution. Um, there's a new pre-treat that um, uh, we've been really excited about, frankly. It's this stuff that comes in a can. Um, Albachem uh, reached out to us at a trade show. Uh, we've been testing this stuff a little bit, and this is their second generation, and it works really, really well. There's not a lot of big, it doesn't gob up and give you a lot of over, um, um, inconsistent areas in the pre-treat application. It's a really smooth spray. This is a, basically an aerosol 
pre-treat solution and it works really, really good. You can purchase this on Shop Melco. Um, not very expensive. Grab yourself four or five of them, keep them around. If you have just one shirt to do, it works great. I wanna show you how to maybe do it um, if you have some, a bunch of left chests. And instead of set firing up your whole pre-treat machine, you only really need a small area. So why not use a, a small, uh, like this, this really easy to use a uh, pre-treat application. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this shirt and wipe this down a little bit. And I'm gonna show you how to apply this. I would say applying it flat is not the right way. You probably want to hold it up like you would a spray, like you would a spray paint can. Uh, but, but for this purpose, I'm just going to show you really quickly. I'm just going to hit that area, kind of go in a circular motion. That should be sufficient. And I know I have a nice, consistent, pre-treated area right there. If I'm doing a left chest, I'm right in the bullseye pretty much. Um, if I feel like I need to maybe hit it again, not a big deal. I can kind of cruise around uh, that spray area and get it, get it right. This won't stain. Um, this pre-treat works really well. It's been giving us a lot of vibrant, good colors. So certainly cannot complain about this stuff. Um, in fact, we're happy to use it. And I, I, actually, I love using it. I've been firing it up quite a bit. Um, so we'll let that dry. And while we do that, Another part of your pre-treat machine that I um, uh, just briefly overlooked here is this filter in the back can have a tendency to clog, okay? So at Melco, if you have a Mr. T1, give us a shout. We're gonna send you a new filter for free, okay? Nice thing about this filter is it's easy to clean. Um, if you want to, let us know. We'll get you two of them. Um, easy to clean if it, if, if it starts to clog up. You can simply pull the filter off, soak it in some water, usually your toothbrush, uh, clean that off, get your other one in. So you might want to get to, in fact, you have one soaking all the time and then one running. And then when, you, when you, it's time to change it out, you can change it out really simply. Just remove, remove it from the line. So let us know. We'll get, you some, we'll get you some of these in the mail. We have a lot of them in stock. Um, and we'll send it to you for free for, if you have a Mr. T1. And any new mid purchase of a Mr. T1 is going to come with these filters. So there's nothing to worry about there. Uh, filter had been a problem in the past, uh, but this, this, problem, this problem has been rectified with this, with this filter here. So let's talk about mixing pre-treat uh, really quickly. Um, we are using a new pre-treat called uh, Universal Pre-treat. This is from uh, Ecofreen. It's non-toxic. Uh, it, it comes in these one liter bottles. When you order from Melco, you're gonna get a box of four of them, okay? And I'm gonna show you how we mix this stuff. So Ecofreen Pre-treat, really, really good stuff. And what I like most about it is it works on all garments pretty much works outstanding on cotton. Uh, it works really, really well on blends and it works really well on poly polyester. So you don't have to use a different pre-treat solution if you're gonna do all of the basically garment materials out there. So 100% cotton, uh, blends, or 100% poly. And it's all about how you dilute it and how you mix it. I like these little mixing buckets from Home Depot. They're great, they have measuring on the side. You can put a lid on it when you're done. Um, set it aside. This one I have marked as a 40 percenter. Um, you can have a 50, you know, 10s, whatever you want. So, or 100 percent, 90 percent was what you would use for polyester. So we'll talk about percentages in a second. Um, but the trick here, it's it's pretty simple. Uh, with 100 percent cotton, we're using 50 percent uh, pre-treat solution, and we're using distilled water. Uh, the reason we use distilled water is because we don't want any of those minerals or any other components in the water when we apply it to the heat press to potentially um, crystallize on the shirt, maybe leave a little bit of staining. So distilled water eliminates all that, uh, that, that process for us. So, yep, check and make sure it's distilled. So it is, that's good. And we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna add, we're gonna add a half an ounce, uh, half a liter, oh yeah, 16, 16 ounces of water, and then another 16 of pre-treat solution. This is Whoa. exploded. Welcome to altitude. Yeah, right. This is going to give us that 50-50 mix. Okay, 32 ounces. So that's 
perfect. If you wanted to add a little bit more water, um, you could go 60-40 on 100% cotton, that's for sure. Um, and that'll help you um, uh, maybe save a little bit of pre-treat, keep it a little, last a little longer. The better quality shirt you use, the less pre-treat you're gonna need. So if you're using a, a Gildan, for example, a uh, Gildan 2000, you will need to use at least 50%, maybe maybe a little bit more, but I think 50% should be sufficient. So 100% cotton, we're 50-50. Um, as the shirt gets lighter, um, so 50-50 is on like the darkest colored garment. So on blacks, um, uh, dark brown, dark navy, well, I'd say just black really, 50-50. And then as you get a little bit lighter, navy, dark brown, uh, you can start maybe moving into 45% concentrate. Um, as you go into royal blue and in red and Kelly green, you might be using 40 or 35 percent concentrate. So experiment with that a little bit. And the reason you can use less concentrate is because it doesn't take as much white to be vibrant on those lighter colors. So again, using good quality blanks, um, you're going to have less dye migration. Things are going to work a little bit easier uh, on the good quality stuff. So this 50-50, I'm going to use this. Uh, I have some pre -treat, uh, shirts to pre-treat today, a bunch of black ones for a trade show. So I'm going to use all that up here in the next hour. Um, it should work really, really well. Is it possible to purchase a single bottle as a trial instead of having to buy all four before you know you like it? Uh, the answer is no. You cannot purchase a single bottle. You have to purchase all four. And the reason is shipping is um, it doesn't make, we would charge you almost the same to ship one bottle as we would all four. So, um, and we're not going to re-box it. Um, but if you're in town and you want to come grab one, you certainly can. Um, uh, but you, you won't you won't be disappointed. Let's put it that way. So even if you did commit to it, um, it would it's a wor it's a worthy investment because this is good stuff. And if it wasn't, I, we wouldn't be talking about it right now. You can you can trust that it's going to deliver. And if um, you if you overuse it, if you use too much, does it stain the garment? Right. So there always is going to be that concern of staining when you're applying pretreat. Um, this stuff stains far less than anything we've used. Uh, Epsom stuff was, is really, really good and doesn't stain, uh, but it's not, you can't use that Epsom cotton pretreat for 100% poly. So that's why I like this universal. So the reason, the way we kind of reduce staining is by reducing concentrate as well. So there's not only the reasons for you don't need to use as much, but if you're reducing concentrate a little bit, uh, then you're kind of potentially reducing staining. So staining is not uh, essentially, it's not eliminated, but it's rare. I'd say at this point with this stuff. This is really good stuff. You're really going to like it. And I think we, we have a ton in stock right now, um, and we're, we're going we're gonna to go through it pretty quick. Um, I don't think there's really, there's not much left unless there's, there's any questions. Um, I think it's pretty, pretty simple. You guys know how to operate this machine now. I do have a guide I can send you if you have one. I can, show, I can tell you, and in that, in that guide teaches you how to make sure it's clean. Essentially, keep your filter clean, keep your nozzle clean, keep the inside of your machine clean. You're going to be in good shape. Um, with that, thanks for watching this Digital Monday, and we're going to see you guys next week with uh, some fun topics on dye sublimation.